Hi, thanks for joining me and welcome to the Creative New You. This is a three-part video I designed to help you tap into your intuition and strengthen your creativity. You can come back to this video every day if you'd like, over and over again, and not quite have the same experience. I wanted to show you how easy it is to get set up and how little you need to invest to get started. Basically, you can use what your kids or grandkids use, which, whatever you have around the house, but I'll walk you through what I have. If you didn't see the supply list, it's a downloadable PDF on my website called The Creative New You. Let me walk you through it. I have an apron. Um, I've set up on a tabletop, put cardboard on the wall so I don't splatter and ruin the wall. I have a canvas from Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. And I have some extra tools that are not required, but fun to use. It's a brayer, a small roller, and plastic scraper, probably a dollar. Plastic gloves. A clean container for water. My palette is a paper plate or and a food cleaner, I mean a food tray. Once you've cleaned it off, it can be your palette. I use acrylics for this because I can paint over and over layers and layers and it dries quickly. So if you want to mimic what I'm doing, acrylics would be great. I don't use a lot of color because when you use too many colors, you don't learn as much about color mixing. So I use a very limited palette. I do like more of a cherry red because it makes pinks and purples easier to get than a bright, say a cadmium red or orangey red. And when I put the paint on the palette, I just use a little dollop about the size of a quarter. And if you run out, you can always add, add more paint, but it dries really quickly. And if you use too much, it'll dry out before you get to it. So really anything goes here. Find your comfort zone, whether you want to be upright or horizontal. And I'll see you in the next part of the video after you get set up. Okay, thanks. Hey, I said earlier that this video was designed to help you tap into your intuition. And many of you may be thinking, what does that even mean? What does that look like? Well, perhaps you have experience journaling or meditating, and that's fantastic. But this is where we quiet the left side of the brain and engage the right side of the brain in a painting activity to hold our focus and set a positive intention. The left side of our brain is judgmental. It creates lists. It's where we live most of the time with our to-dos, and what we should and shouldn't do. It's here to keep us safe and it's scared of the unknown. Our intuition is really just the opposite. And if you've ever seen a five-year-old child completely absorbed painting and having a great time, oblivious of time, whatever, that's our goal. I want you to take a leap of faith here and trust that whatever your intuition is whispering to you is probably exactly what you need to hear. Our left brain tends to dwell on things that are out of place, that aren't right, that don't feel harmonious. And instead, we're going to give that a vacation, even if it's only for 30 minutes, and tap into what we want to create. What positive energy can we focus on? So the universe here is vibrations, and it will provide more of whatever vibration you are sending out there. So if you want more positivity in your life, let's take a time out to be totally positive. I'm gonna present some tools to you that will help you set that intention with exactly what you want for your painting. But first, we are going to just simply dive into the paint enjoy the color and cover this white canvas with whatever colors you desire. Let's get going, shall we? 
Hey, welcome back. During the break, I took a moment to light a candle, fill up my containers with water, and I have squeezed out some paint onto my palette. I have a white, yellow, pinkish red, blue, black, and another fun color that I added just because I love it. So I took a moment, I did some slow, repetitive, conscious breathing, breathing in for four, breathing out for four, breathing in and out to the count of at least three. And when you feel relaxed, we're gonna jump in and throw some paint on the canvas completely intuitively. There are no mistakes to be made here, only happy accidents. So just apply the principles of playfulness, curiosity, and exploration. Don't forget your gloves, if you have some. Here we go. A little bit of water. And here goes pink. Sometimes I'll use a one brush for pinks and purples and another brush for lighter colors like yellow. See how the colors change when you just push them right on top of each other. Maybe a little squirt bottle. And since it's dripping downward, I might turn it over, see what happens then. Little red with that yellow turns it orange. a ton of paint here. And my specialty color, sort of a turquoise. How fun's that? I still have some pink left, so why not use it? Gonna vary the strokes a little bit because I did a lot of big swooping strokes. And maybe now I'm gonna use some staccato type marks.
happens with my left hand. Happy accidents. I don't have to use all my paint, but I can mix some of this blue that I haven't used very much of with some white. Maybe we'll splat a little bit. If I dry it with a paper towel, it actually removes some of the paint. I like it. White with some leftover red because I love pink. And voila. Don't forget to take your brushes if you're going to take a break and dip them in water because acrylics dry super fast and you don't want them to totally harden up. So just keep them in water. You can wash them with Dawn liquid if you want to take a break before the next section. But I look forward to seeing you back when we make our symbol. I hope you had fun. Thanks. Hi, are you ready for the next step? This is where it gets really interesting and personal. I didn't want to mention the symbols prior to getting past this first step because I didn't want you to worry about what should I pick? Am I picking the right one? How do I make that? I'm going to walk you through it in a very easy to follow way. You can copy me or choose one of your own. I've used some Native American wisdom with medicine cards and randomly picked three cards. I picked an owl, a lizard, and a fox. So the owl, it symbolizes inner wisdom and change. The fox represents spiritually intelligence, good luck, and prosperity. And the lizard is rejuvenation, renewal, and determination. So think about this, tune into your breath, pause this video, take your time, and see what resonates with you. This is about what you want and what you need in your life. Now you may think these are very uh, novice and that's okay, because the more personal they are, the more unique they are to you. So we're gonna make an outline of the symbol of our choice onto our canvas. And it can look as simple, this is a fox. So we imprint him onto the surface and then we decorate around him. This is an example of the lizard. Again, not a great work of art, but symbolic. And we relate to symbols and stories as humans. They have meaning for us. And here's a picture done by my mentor, Whitney Freya. She painted nothing but owls for two years. She was obsessed with owls. So adorable. 
if none of these resonate with you, you're free to do what you want because we are here to create a vibration on the canvas and writing words is very powerful. So this is a lovely example by another one of my creatively fit coaches, Brittany, that goes over the colors with the words, I am the artist of my life. I am the artist of my life. And this is the point of the whole video is that you know inside what you need and want to change. If you are struggling financially, you want to spend some time painting abundance. If you're worried about health issues, you'll want to spend time painting well-being. You know in your heart of hearts what's speaking to you. And this is your vehicle to change your vibration instead of dwelling on the negative or what's wrong in life, to change it to a positive vibration. Because the universe speaks vibration. It doesn't speak English. And if you think there is happiness out there, it will bring you more happiness. If you dwell on bad luck, guess what? So let's take a moment for ourselves, go inward, decide what you wanna paint. And if you can't decide, just copy me for fun. You can come back to this exercise over and over. You can get your own medicine cards. You can pick your symbol every day. So let, let's make this fun. I just want to review the symbols with you one more time. The fox is intelligence, good luck, and prosperity. The owl is inner wisdom and change. And the lizard is rejuvenation, renewal, and determination. I've chosen to do the lizard, and you are welcome to follow along and copy me. Also free to do anything you'd like. My palette, I forgot yellow. We'll see if I need it. Again, there are no mistakes here, only happy accidents. And I'm gonna suggest, I'm making a very, very dark blackish purple because I can never have too much purple in my life. I don't know about you. But pick what you love. And I've got the lizard right up here. And I want to make, my suggestion is hit at the edges when you can. I want the tail to come in here and go off the canvas, come back on and have a body. I'm going to make the head right here. It's kind of a triangle or sort of a lopsided square. You just want to get big blocky shapes. That's the body. Make that shape a little more organic. And he's got arms and legs. Again, just a triangle, another triangle, I mean a Rectangle, rectangle, and then little toes. Maybe five. Going off, off the canvas. A 
You may say, why do I go off the canvas? Well, it just divides it into interesting design shapes and makes it more bold and dynamic.
painting along with me in this process. The lizard, now every time I look at it, will represent renewal, determination, and rejuvenation for me. So it has a positive effect on my life. I may choose to decorate him some more or paint over him entirely in another process with a different symbol. I hope you revisit this again and again and enjoy this process. I'd love to know how you feel about it and feel free to email me through my website at www.brucebingham.com or email me at brucebingham at gmail. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and be well.